Big Dip on a Bus is doing a playthrough of Majora's Mask, and in one of the recent videos, uh, he was going through the forest, and a witch heads out of her house through the chimney and flying away on a broomstick. And his co-commentator asked, why didn't she just use the door? And my brain, stuck in contrarian mode as it always is, said, well, duh, the door must be on top of the building. And that is the uh, impetus for this video. Again, with impetus. I love that word. So, um, I wanted to do another video where people give me ideas. Um, I have put some thought into this, but I'm not going to share my ideas right now because I love seeing what other people come up with. So, the idea is, the scene is that you're heading out in the wilderness, and I, I like the idea of this being in a desert or not inside a forest itself, but sort I can see it definitely on a, like a grassland um, adjacent to a forest, so it doesn't have to be desert itself. It just has to not be trees. And I see these mud huts, and that's what this picture is for. This, I actually really like this dome-shaped mud hut right here. Forget this door. Imagine that that's mud too. And here's some other ones. And once again, forget the door here. It's just these, you know, big dome-shaped mud huts. And then at the very top, there's a hole, and that's the only way in or out of these mud huts. And there's several of them. There's not just one, but, you know, there's a bunch of them, like half a dozen to a dozen of them all sitting around in the general same area. And the only way in or out of them is in the very top. And they're not overly huge, like this one right here, you know, a person, a couple people could fit inside of it. And given the size of this door, these are about twice as big as the other ones. So, but they're that big. And again, the only way to get in or out is at the very apex, which means if you're a normal human being walking along on the ground, they're going to be difficult to get into. Even something like this, I mean, this is just so small. Uh, these are children, so an adult is probably as tall as it. So I'm thinking more along the lines of something like this, where it's much taller, about 10 feet tall or so. Uh, that way, if you are a human being, you can't just reach up and grab the top and pull yourself up make it difficult to get up there. Uh, people standing on each other's shoulders, or if you have like a jump or fly spell to get to the top. And I'm undecided whether I like the fact that there's just an open hole, or if there's a, a door, but it's just on the top instead of down below. And of course, then it would be more like a trap door um, kind of setup, and probably circular, I don't think, or it could be a square, but I don't think like a normal rectangular door sitting up there. And just think, I mean, you can even, if you want, pause the video to think about it, but I, like I said, I'm not going to share my thoughts on it. What made these? What lives inside of these? Who would put the door on the top of the thing? And I'll go, I'll go ahead and share some thoughts about that. There's two that leap to mind immediately. One, something that flies is obviously going to fly out the top and then land back on the top and go down into the door inside. So something that flies, or the other thing would be something that's very good at climbing. In D&D, &D, certain creatures have climb speeds, and so they can just climb up a wall or up the side of a tall, you know, dome like this, and it wouldn't be any problem at all. Here, with all these handholds like this, it would be kind of easier for PCs to climb up, so that might be something to incorporate if you want it in a lower level area where they're not going to have access to like fly spells or significantly large jump checks with a jump spell to get up there. But uh, for these D&D creatures with climb speeds, they can just climb up the side of it and drop down the hole at the top. The problem with the climbing is that it's kind of inefficient. You don't want to climb, you know, build these above ground structures and then have to climb up to the top and get inside and then climb up from the inside back to the hole and then climb out. That's a lot of energy you're using for no purpose. Even if you have a climb speed, you're more likely to put the door down at the ground, uh, just like a normal human being would have it. But this being, you know, fantasy land, it is possible that a creature is like that. The third thing that I just thought about uh, while starting this video was like the Dwerger dwarves. These are the gray dwarves. They're evil, but they have the racial ability to 
cast in large. So normally they're like four, four or five feet tall, but they can once a day they can magically become like ten or twelve feet tall. These kinds of creatures, not necessarily those them you know the dwerger themselves, but creatures that have the ability to change their height like that, could have the same kind of setup where they come tall. They become tall, grab the you know the rim of the doorway or a handle up at the very top of their structure, and then shrink down. And then when they shrink, because they're holding onto that handle, they're up at the top. It would be a really, again, a very inefficient way to do it, but that's a possibility. So those are to that. That's the idea that we're working on right now. Is the scene is the PCs come across all of these mud huts, these mud mounds, these mounds of mud. Uh, that have been shaped into domes and the only way in or out they're completely featureless when you walk around them or you can add features but the the essential point here is there's no entry or exit anywhere except from the very top and I mean they could after you get in through that hole in the top have tunnels going underground and what have you just the most important essential point is there's no door on the side of the mound now, when I was thinking about this the other day, I mean, immediately after the video came on, and I thought of these mud huts with a door at the top, the first thing that came to mind, of course, were wasps' nests and uh, and bees and stuff like that. Because if you take this and tip it on its side, this is kind of what I've got the idea of. They always have this one hole, but I mean, even flying bees put it down at the bottom. So here it would actually, you'd have to, you know, tip it over to the top. And that brings us to the second point of this video, which is not about um, that particular thing. I don't, I mean, you could use the mud huts to just house a bunch of bees, like even giant bees, which is what the next point is. Giant bees. This is a giant wasp. I think this is from WoW, because this is from a website, wowpettopia.com. So I'm guessing this is a pet in WoW. But... Um, the second part of this is just to contemplate giant bees. Now, there's a couple different ways you could contemplate giant. There is giant from a reasonable perspective. Normally, bees are small. They're, you know, they fit on your thumbnail. That's about how big they are. I mean, they're, they're pretty tiny little bugs. There are bigger bees. Like, uh, I know that there's these big black bees. And they're like the size of the, you know, the first knuckle of my thumb and that's pretty big compared to a normal bee that's like two or three times the size but think of a giant bee I'm talking a bee about the size of your fist that is a giant bee I would prop my head would explode if I saw a swarm of bees the size of my fist coming at me I, I, I would just give up it's like okay goodbye gene pool I'm dead now I'm not even allergic to bees, and I know that these guys are going to kill me. And then there's even bigger. I mean, you can imagine a bee the size of a dog. That is a giant bee. That's comically huge. And then you can imagine even bigger, a bee the size of a car, or a bee the size of a house. I mean, you can keep going bigger and bigger. Um, if I, I like the idea of giant bees to start off the size of a fist. That's big enough that it's like, wow. You could kind of almost imagine that somewhere in the world there might be bees that big. And it's not so, but they're not quite as dangerous. If you were going to have PCs fight giant bees, you'd probably go with bees the size of a dog. Not like a, a big dog, like a, a mastiff or a, a Labrador retriever, but a smaller dog. You know, the little toy, not like a, a chihuahua toy dog, but like a terrier or a pit bull. You know, decently sized basketballish type bees, and a swarm of those coming down on PCs that would be bad. Um, what was the whole point of this? Oh, and the third, the point of the bee transition. I had gone from mud huts to wasp nests to giant bees. Um, my friend who's running the sandbox game had what are what were called phase wasps in his game they were basically giant wasps and not comically giant but just extra big wasps maybe the size of like a basketball or such and their special power 
was that they could shoot uh, what was mechanically magic missile from their stingers. So they could sit back, you would have like four or five of these phase wasps, and they would be shooting magic missiles at you. And that, you can't dodge a magic missile, so I mean, they're just raining down pain on you. I like that, and I'm stealing that idea. It doesn't have to go with these huts, these big mud mounds, although it's a possibility that they are filled with phase wasps. But uh, that is... And I'm saving this picture. Totally saving it. But that would be it. So, yeah. I'm done. Bye-bye.